In this video, we are going to perform a fluid dynamic analysis of the air inside the computer housing. A fluid dynamic simulation is used to predict the behavior and motion of a liquid or gas. This can be inside a closed domain, like water inside a pipe, or on the outside of a body, like the air surrounding an airplane. The simulation of the fluid motion lets us predict how the object we are analyzing will perform and provides insight on ways to improve the design. We will first define how the boundaries of the fluid volume affect the air inside it. These settings are called boundary conditions. In our case, we will specify where the air enters and exits the volume, and what boundaries cannot be crossed. Then, we will run the simulation and analyze the results. Let's click on the Stage Navigator and move to the Explore stage to set up our simulation. Under the Simulation tab, select the Fluid Flow Physics. Let's start with defining where the air enters the fluid volume. The two disks we created before represent the two fans that blow air into the computer. Select one of them to set it as an inlet. Enter a value of 6 meters per second for the velocity. Since the air coming from the fan would rotate with respect to the fan axis, let's also add some swirl. Use a value of negative 1200 RPM and press enter. Then select the other fan and press the green check mark to apply the same conditions. In the simulation information display, a message reminds us that we need an outlet for the air to exit the volume. Click on the x-axis in the bottom left corner of the window to view the model from the side. Then click and drag a box that includes all the end faces of the outlets. This will select all the faces of the outlets in a single operation. Specify the boundary condition type as outlet and press the green check mark. Last, select the fluid material and change it to air. Now, our fluid dynamic simulation is set and can be started. All the boundaries that we did not select are automatically set as solid walls, so the fluid cannot cross them. To review the boundary conditions set, you can hover the mouse over the small dots appearing on the model. Now, go to the results arc in the bottom right corner and press solve. The rotating white mark on the solution information display indicates the simulation is proceeding. Once that stops and the hexagon edges are green, the solution has converged. Disable the streamlines in the results arc for now. Activate the contours. If we hover the mouse over the contours icon, we can open the options panel. Let's set the surface display priority to inner so we can visualize what is happening inside the model. The outer faces become transparent automatically, letting us see through them. What we see here are the contour plots of the air velocity near the internal boundaries. The color bar, or the legend, on the right tells us that red and orange colors indicate regions where the velocity is high, while blue colors indicate regions where the velocity is low. The air exits the fans and slows down, but then accelerates as it interacts with the objects in the enclosure. The contours show that the air is not moving smoothly. Let's now deactivate the contours and activate the Streamlines tool to visualize how the air moves inside the fluid domain. Before any further explanation, 
Let's adjust the emitter size and position. Click on the orange circle and drag it to make its size comparable to the fan's outer diameter. Then click the light blue dot in the center. Select the red axis to move the emitter to the left fan location. And then place it just past the fan disc. What you see here are streamlines. They show how the air blown by the fan would move through the domain. The color of the streamlines highlights the local velocity of the fluid. The swirl effect of the fan is quite evident. Most of the flow moves past the fan, then approaches the side wall and passes through half of the heatsink before leaving the housing. However, part of it impacts the front of the smaller heatsink and deviates toward the right side of the housing. Now move the emitter to the other fan. A similar trend can be seen with the air motion here. Turn off the streamlines and activate the particle emitter. Modify the size of the particles and adjust the maximum value of the range to filter out the fast moving particles and visualize only the slow moving blue ones. You will notice two slow swirling motions aligned with the hub of the fans. Also, notice that the presence of the front heatsink causes a wake of slow-moving air behind it. This is not optimal, since slow-moving air will not help much in cooling down the chips behind this object. We should think of a better layout for the components to improve the airflow and, consequently, the cooling effect of the fans. Save the model as version 1 and prepare for the next segment.